我觉得他今天就不要走了。大家都说你二零一一年进那个比特币的人，那就是嗯、呃，就是大家都来那个求一下这个有没有什么下一次新的这个啊、呃、价格的这个去呃变化吧。然后我今天讲到价格嗯、呃、的变化，我还想。呃，为下一个呃演讲者做一点去呃铺垫。嗯，我最近突然有一个发现，嗯，大家都有没有听过“对冲”这个词啊？都听过吗？“对冲”这个词，在“对冲”这个词的英文里面是 hedge。我觉得这是一个呃很就是中文才真正把“对冲”的这个意义，嗯，用汉字的。嗯，理解把它表现得非常完全。那对就是有一个双方，啊、呃，你对方。那冲呢，就是我们把风险要冲掉。那么对冲这个行为，其实在金融啊、呃、领域里面是非常常用的。那么作为嗯、呃、对冲这个行为出来的金融衍生品的这个市场，甚至是比现在我们的这个 spot trading 啊、呃、的市场要大，不知道可能要上上百倍。那么现在，嗯，很大的问题，其实大家应该也知道，就是不光是刚才，呃，菩提的 founder 讲的，还是，呃，之后我们要再谈的，嗯，另外一个 speaker 也会讲到的，就有很大的问题，就在 blockchain 里面的价格，现在防止了，就价格的浮动，防止了很多新的应用真正能够使用起来他们的代币。嗯，我们下面，呃。嗯、呃，下面这位啊，演讲的 Seth， 他是我我先讲一下他的背景，就他是呃芝加哥来的一位呃有十三年啊、呃、金融衍生品交易的一个资深的 trader。那他之前的所，可能因为芝加哥其实大家可能不太了解，是美国啊、呃，甚至是全球做金融衍生品的中心，他真正是金融衍生品的中心。那美呃纽约。嗯、呃，大家可能对啊、呃、高盛啊大摩比较熟悉，但芝加哥的这些很有名、很有名或者是非常有嗯、呃、权威的这些所，可能大家的名字并不知道。那么 SaaS 其实就是其中一个所里面的一个资深的一个 partner。那他做了十三年出来以后，决定我不要在这个古典的这个嗯、呃、traditional derivatives market 在做 trading。我想去真正的，因为啊、uh, ，blockchain， 我看到了这个技术会为金融衍生品带来新的革命。我想为大家带来一些啊， uh, 完全与 traditional 啊、uh, derivatives market 不太同呃不太一样的这种思考方式。那么我啊、um, ，Seth， 有请。Hi, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thanks to GMIC for having me. Melody, thanks for the introduction.、Um, as she mentioned,、uh, my name is Seth Rubin.、Uh, I am the CEO and co-founder of Market Protocol. I've been in the trading space since 2005 as a derivatives trader. I run and manage a number of different、uh, algorithmic derivative desks. I've been a market maker in a number of different products.、Um, I first entered the blockchain space in 2015 as a trader, very much interested in、um, trading crypto assets. It was later in 2016 and、um, early 2017 that I became much more interested in the technology、uh, around the blockchain space and less interested in actually trading. So one of the big issues that、um, we see right now, and we talk about a lot in the blockchain space, is we talk about scaling.、Um, but oftentimes, when we talk about scaling, we're talking about technology scaling. We need to increase blocks. We need to increase block size. We need more transactions.、Um, one of the things, though, that people don't really talk about as often is that we need to、um, scale through price stability. So right now, no matter. What you think of when you think of crypto assets as their、uh, medium of exchange,、uh, store of value,、um, as utility tokens in, in applications,、uh, the 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 reality is they're they're too volatile for any of those applications.、Um, right now, if you think about like what has happened in the price of crypto assets over the last few months,、um, we've seen that the price volatility far exceeds any of the utility that people hope to gain from. Holding those crypto assets. So, 
just to very quickly compare crypto assets to uh, some more traditional assets, um, in the last year, the largest, this everything is to the US dollar. The largest move in Ethereum relative to the US dollar has been about 35%. To compare to something like gold, a uh, store of value, it's moved 2%. So um, that move is almost 20 times bigger in, in crypto. Uh, the daily standard deviation of Ethereum to the US dollar uh, is about 7.5%. Um, compare that to uh, the US dollar versus the euro, uh, and it's about a half percent. So it's, it's about 15 times more volatile uh, in the crypto space. We all already knew that, though. Um, so basically what, what's really important here, though, is that we need to be able to separate uh, price from, from utility. So I want to talk a second about what derivatives are and, and why they're used in the, in the traditional space. So derivatives really are just an agreement between two people to exchange value or price exposure to something in the future. Um, so derivatives, a good example of a common derivative that a lot of people think about is something like the S&P Future, which, which trades in Chicago. And the S&P Future is um, a dollar-denominated future. Traders make or lose dollars based on how uh, a basket of reference assets move, in this case, the S&P 500. Um, so, Derivatives are used for a couple things, but the main few things that derivatives are used for is they're used for hedging. So uh, they're an essential piece for risk mitigation. So for example, a, a bank will hedge interest rate exposure, a airline will hedge jet, uh, jet fuel exposure, and what that does is that lets those businesses manage their risk and scale and grow their businesses. Uh, another important use of derivatives is uh, speculation. So um, because they're derivative relationships, people can buy and sell derivatives without actually taking custody of the underlying assets. So um, one of the things that's important for an efficient marketplace is that you have buyers and sellers. Uh, currently in the, in the crypto marketplace, there's almost entirely buyers. There really aren't any speculative short sellers. And speculative short sellers provide you know, that other piece of an efficient marketplace that really allows us to, to reduce volatility. And finally, derivatives also help in the sense that they're, because they're derivative exposure, we never actually have to take custody of, of underlying assets. Another issue that I see in the space, that we see in the space, is uh, with the centralization of a lot of the current and existing uh, exchange infrastructure. We see that in the traditional marketplace, and we also see that in the crypto marketplace. A few of the, the issues there is we, we limit access by centralizing uh, these exchanges. A big, big issue with all these centralized exchanges is uh, security and custody of funds. Uh, they have limited product offerings, and um, they're, they're very difficult to still short and hedge these assets. So when we first pursued market protocol, and, and, and when, we, when we began working on market protocol, we had two real focuses. The first was that we wanted to separate or decouple price volatility from digital assets, and we believe that's a necessary piece of of this whole uh, blockchain puzzle, it's, it's necessary to scale the space. Just as much as technology is necessary to scale the space, until these crypto assets aren't moving 10% a day, 50% a month, no one can hold crypto assets for any other reason there, but, but speculation right now. Uh, the second thing is that uh, Market Protocol provides the open source building blocks for decentralized derivatives tradings and exchanges. Uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, Market Protocol is free to use. It's released uh, under the Apache 2.0 open source license. So market smart contracts decentralize accounting, custody of funds, and position management. So everything that we do regarding um, accounting, custody of funds, and position management is done on chain. Uh, all trades and, and all relationships in Market Protocol are fully collateralized, uh, and they're trustless get, and, and allow users to get um, exposure to real world and digital assets. So I just want to quickly walk through like a, a very quick trade example for market protocol. Basically, holders of ERC-20 assets can use those assets as collateral to invest in other uh, trading relationships or, or, or uh, sorry, uh, in other in trading relationships. So prior to execution, uh, Bob and Alice would both submit their ERC-20 collateral to a market smart contract. Uh, at execution, the two of them, when they agree on a price, the collateral that they've deposited to that market smart contract gets locked in that contract and is basically escrowed for the duration of that trade. Um, we use an oracle, and I'll cover that in a second, to bring external data onto the Ethereum blockchain. In this example, say the, that um, Bob is short this contract, Alice is long this contract, and the price of the relationship increases. Um, 
Bob would have lost money, Alice would have, have made money when the contract is, is closed, when they trade out of it or that contract expires, um, Alice would then be able to withdraw profit and Bob would have, have had a loss. With Market Protocol, we've designed a open source framework, an open source protocol that allows users to create any contract relationship that, that they'd like. Um, the first part of any market contract relationship is an ERC-20 base token. So most likely, most of these relationships will have base tokens of something like Ethereum or maybe like a stable coin, like a make or die or a tether. This is what users and traders will make or lose as a relationship they're trading uh, moves. We use an Oracle solution to bring external data onto the Ethereum blockchain. So our alpha product is written using a, a product called Oracleize it. Thomson Reuters has another one called Block One IQ, uh, and there are a number of other Oracle solutions. Then we have a reference asset, and the reference asset is what we um, derive value from. So the market uh, protocol is the protocol layer that sits on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so Market Protocol provides core infrastructure for trading exchanges and other dApps. So uh, on top of Market Protocol, we'll see different third parties implement dApps or exchange infrastructure. The exchange infrastructure um, has this sort of standardized uh, node API that, that people can use. I want to quickly talk about um, a number of different use cases and a number of reasons why people would choose to use Market Protocol. So right now, um, a lot of different projects have access tokens or utility tokens that provide uh, access to a platform. For example, there's a, there's a project called Salt Lending, which basically you hold a token or buy a token to access a lending platform. While you own that token, you have um, tremendous exposure to the price risk of that token. So that token in the last, say, month, two, three months has moved from maybe $2 to $20, back down to $2, sort of everything in between. The volatility of that token far exceeds any utility you hope to gain by using that platform. So solving that problem and separating that volatility from the utility is, is really an important piece to, to enable that, that business to really uh, reach its potential. Um, a couple other good examples of sort of uh, uh, on-chain or hedged use case would be if you are a miner and you just spent um, a bunch of money to buy mining equipment and mining hardware, and your whole mining operation is viable right now where, where we're trading in, in, say, Ethereum. If the price of Ethereum comes down, all of a sudden your mining operation is no longer solvent. So the ability for one of those miners to hedge that, that future production uh, allows them then to sort of responsibly grow in and operate their, their business. As we see a lot of different um, uh, a lot of different projects move towards proof of stake or some sort of hybrid implementation, you have a scenario where traders, users, businesses are now staking tokens and smart contracts for stake rewards. While those contracts are staked and when those assets are staked for for stake rewards, they have no way for the user or the trader to actually trade those tokens while they're locked. So all they're gaining is sort of a smaller stake reward where the volatility of just holding that token far exceeds the stake reward. So that again allows hedging um, of, of those stake tokens. Because market protocol is derivative exposure, everything we do uh, has, has no custody. So um, what a lot of people think about right now is they think about sort of solving for cross-chain trading. They think about how to um, uh, enable an atomic swaps. Um, but for most people, that's really not what's important. Most people really just care about price exposure. So when I buy Monero or I buy Bitcoin or I buy Dash, I'm not buying it because I actually want to take custody of the underlying crypto asset. I'm buying it because I want the price exposure. So with Market Protocol, what you can do is you can create a contract that's Ethereum versus Dash, Ethereum versus Monero, Ethereum versus Ripple, and, and, and receive price exposure similar to as if you own those assets without actually taking custody of those assets. So what that does is that removes the need for multiple exchanges, that removes the need for multiple wallets, and that dramatically simplifies trading. Some of the other cool things is you can, you can create sort of index products. So if I want to trade uh, Monero, Bitcoin, and Dash as a single unit, I can use a market contract and create that relationship and trade that relationship. What that also means is that I can hedge or, or um, sell short any of those other uh, alternative crypto assets. So for example, if, if I want to hedge my NEO position or I want to sell uh, Monero, I can do that too. And again, it's without taking custody. Another application of market protocol then um, is off-chain trading relationships. 
So um, for a lot of people, the same thing. Um, like when I, when I buy Apple stock, I'm not buying Apple stock because I want to vote on corporate action or because I actually want to take custody of the stock. I'm only buying the Apple stock and taking custody of the Apple stock because that's the only way I can get price exposure to that Apple stock. So with Market Protocol, we can create off-chain relationships using something like uh, Tether or MakerDAI and recreate traditional relationships like Apple stock um, versus Tether. The um, interesting thing here, same story, is we can actually create products that don't exist uh, or don't trade on any other exchange. So, for example, we can create uh, a product that's something like Make or Die versus Fangs. And that's actually something now that we can trade in a decentralized framework, um, and we can trade that um, without ever converting back to fiat. So, Market Protocol um, basically is, is, is the protocol layer that other people or other projects can implement uh, their applications on top of. Um, we are off-chain for um, order book hosts, so order, anyone can implement a off-chain order book host, and then uh, we go, as I mentioned before, on-chain for a lot of the accounting and, and collateral. The uh, proof of concept was out in November last year. Uh, we just released the first version of our beta. Uh, it's active on Rinkeby Test Network right now. Um, and the first version of the beta is basically set up to allow users to create and uh, view and deploy these contract relationships. So the first part of a market smart contract is defining the relationship. So in this example, uh, we create uh, a contract that has a base token of Ethereum, that's our collateral, um, using uh, the price of Monero, uh, using an oracle to bring in that price from Binance with the underlying asset of Monero. So what we've then created is a relationship that's Ethereum versus Monero that settles to the price of Monero on Binance, but we've stayed on the Ethereum blockchain and we never actually have to take custody of Monero. If anyone's taking custody of Monero, that, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt, right? Um, so that's the first, uh, sort of the first version of our beta dApp. The next version of our dApp is out um, later in the spring, and that will be a simulated trading environment that will allow users to actually see and trade and, and, and view um, uh, deployed market smart contracts. We plan to have a number of different uh, competitions and, and bounties in a lot of different ways to involve our community. Um, so we're looking for a lot of people to um, sort of get involved, understand the project. We are an open source, again, on Apache 2.0, so we're looking to add contributors. Uh, we're also looking for application partners, people that are interested in building exchanges or building different applications on top of market protocol. Thanks for having me. I appreciate your time.